people recommend I don't do that. It's, uh, I have a problem. Obviously, I've had addiction <laughs> problems. There's a big addiction component to, to graffiti. And so, yeah, I try and control that. Do you but, have a problem, sir? Do you have a problem with yeah, your cans? No, no, I need to go to like, you know, Tagaholics Anonymous or whatever. Because oh! like, so, you know, so it is, it gets it. <laughs> go. <laughs> Tagaholics right, Anonymous. Two kilo of television. <laughs> yeah, oh. so, you know, I'll, I'll put my hand up and say, hi, I'm Ingo, I'm a Tagaholic. But it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's addictive and it's, it's such an outlet and it's weirdly, well, not weirdly, it's rewarding. Mm. And, uh, you know, I I do it because I, I like seeing my name. What's up. the reward? Killer Killer Podcast. Killer Killer Official com. You need the Kellervision app. 24 7 mini documentaries, podcasts, live shows, DJ live streams, top fives, subscription packages, plus products for all your podcasts and street culture sports. Download it from the App Store for free today. Instagram UK frontline. Beatbox created. And we need to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Keller podcast. All right, so we're in. Ladies and gentlemen, Killer Keller podcast, live and direct, central London, or as central as you want, uh, as central as you need to be. You know what it is, you know what time it is. Big shout out to all the originals, all the regulars that are uh, out there and avidly sharing, sharing is caring and all that business. Big shout out to graffitikings.co.uk. Hold tight to everyone's got the Kellervision app, free download, Android, iPhone, for your street culture sins. Strange station, hold tight, everyone. Hold tight, for God's sake. I don't avidly do this to anyone at the start of their career, as you know. But this man is putting in some heat on the street. And if you don't know about it, you've been living under a rock, that's for sure. Um, bringing style and a whole different take on things over here in London. There's even whispers that he's going to be put into TU, untouchables in a not so distant future. He goes by the name of Ingo, UK, London. Good to see you, man. How are you, my brother? I'm good, man. I hope that intro did you justice. Mate, uh, I'm, I'm honoured to be here. Yeah, I'll say that first and foremost. I'm honoured to be here. I, I say this with such affection because, first of all, you're a good guy. Second of Thank all, you. the breadth in which you have gone in and attacked things is so broad, like... <laughs> On so many levels, yeah. it's, re- it's really hit the grade as a well-balanced um, activation on your part. Yeah, de- it's definitely been an activation. Yeah, you could say that. <laughs> Where does this activation come from, Ingo? Well, I mean, just to make it as short as possible, uh, I've always kind of been into graph. I always saw it um, as being, uh, being as vague as possible. Like, I, I grew up in the UK... But um, I lived in the States for about 10 years. Mm. And so around the time that I think most writers were getting into graph here in the UK, um, my life completely changed and I was in another country and I wasn't exposed to it. Mm. Uh, at least not in the way that most London writers or UK writers uh, se- seem to be exposed to mm-hmm. it. So, you know, I came into it quite late. Um, I've only really been painting for about two years and uh, mm. of that two years, maybe like a year, like I've been like hitting it. I'm not not gonna claim like I'm hitting it the hardest or anywhere near, but like um, you know, mm-hmm. it's 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 like back to the activation thing. Like it's activated something that I've always wanted to do, and I, I got the opportunity to start doing it, and it's you know it's taken over. Going crazy, yeah. Activation is the right word, isn't it? Um, it feels like you. It almost felt like when I see it, because bear in mind. Your style is very, it's very unique to you. Thank you. I feel, um, but it feels like there was. It's almost like quote unquote. There's no time to lose. I'm going all out, really, really quickly, and it just feels like. It, and again, to anybody that knows exactly what I'm talking about, like you're now pairing up with different writers. People are now slowly. Tr- they're coming to the idea that actually this guy's here to stay. Well, I, I like to think that I'm here to stay, and like part of my whole thing is is like I'm just getting started, and I don't know like where it's gonna go. Like, I mean, I I sort of started in a weird way. Like, I'd done, I came up with my tag in like 2004. I had one mate in school. This is in the states. We're in high school. We used to like draw together and draw these characters and things. He's like, yeah, let's do some, let's do graffiti. Let's come up with tags, and he he comes up with one. I think it was Sense S E N S E. I don't know if he's still doing anything, but, you know, big up sense, uh, original. Yeah, well, I, I, don't, I don't know if it's sense one, but, you know, either way. Um, <laughs> and so I, I'm just like struggling to come up with something. I ended up 
flicking through the back of a Zelda Ocarina of Time on N64. Uh, explain what that is, just for those that, like me, ain't got a fucking clue what... <laughs> yeah, do, you know, there's an old N64 game, and, like, I had the little manual in the back, and I had all the characters, and I'm looking at the characters. There's this one guy, Ingo the Farmer, and he's just this big, tall guy with a mustache, and, like, I looked at it, I was like... That's that's my guy. Mm. Like that's gonna be my tag. Mm. And like in hindsight, like okay, it's maybe it's not the best origin story, mm. but it's stuck. And so, a couple of years back, when uh, through one friend I met another guy who who used to write back in the day. Big up Sama HTB. Um, oh, tight, oh, tight. New he, names, new names in the building. Come on. Yeah, he. Uh, he yeah, I got to you know give him credit with basically he saw my old black books and you know he's he's like oh yeah you, uh, you know. My mate told me that you used to, you know, draw like a little bit of graph and stuff. He's like, oh, I've done this and that. And I was like, oh, that's sick. Mm. And he basically was like, listen, like you need to, you need to come out with us. Like, you know, nothing serious, a bit of bombing, this and that, you know, sort of bought me my first tin, you know, since. Who's Emma did? Yeah, big well, up Sema. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, no, no go, games. Got me, Here, got me take this. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, pretty much that. Like, come out, you know, do a few tags, see what happens, and you know, from there it just it 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 progressed. Um, but it's something that I'd always wanted to do. And at that point in time, this is right, r probably right before lockdown, uh, which I'm sure a lot of people can relate to because it seems like graph is, mm. that's when I really started to notice it again. I'd always noticed it as soon as I moved back yeah. to the UK. Um, and it had always been on my radar, but like it really sort of kicked off around then. Mm. Um, and yeah, what's my point? Uh, the boy is like, basically he, you know, he got me into it at a time where I really needed a way of, of focusing mm. on on something else. Um, you know, I, I'd had drug problems in the past and like I'd, you know, I, I'd been struggling for a while and he showed me this thing and it became a massive outlet for me. And that's, I think, why I've gone sort of like so crazy with it because I was going so crazy in other areas of my life. It gave me a new outlet mm. and something that, in my eyes, is a lot more positive and certainly a lot more healthy. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, at this point, big up Sykes inside the building. Old tight Sykes. Yeah, big up Sykes. Come on, come on. Again, just emphasising the fact that uh, you, you, you're rolling with very selective, very... I'm, I'm um, lucky. I'm lucky, cool man. Uh, like, along the way, I've met, like... Uh, I've met people that I, I'd see them up like you know for, big up dime like he's probably oh, that dime. he's uh, obviously you know he's just been on the on the show um mm -hmm. but yeah he really showed me the ropes like he he set me on the right direction mm -hmm. and now it's his I'm sure he'll probably agree but it's got to the point where now he's like bro bro Ingo calm down a bit calm mm -hmm. down a bit but you know it, with, with with you know <laughs> from a place of wisdom and experience um but he's sort of you know he's one of the people along with Sykes like they've seen mm. me go from where I was you know like a year ago to mm. where I am now and you know a lot of other people you know big up stop big mm. up brap mm -hmm. uh two guys you know I've met down at legal wall mm -hmm. and you know we just you know, we just hit it off and like, you know, they, they took me to spots, they you know, took me out. And mm. like, that's, you know, that's been one of the biggest things is like, I've met these people who've been willing to sort of share their spots, share their, their time and their yeah. energy with me. And that's been, that's been what's inspired me. And I've got to say as well, just to add value to that, uh, you were with me, a VIP when I did my first ever graffiti piece. Right, well, that, was the, that was the you first it, time I met you. Yeah. I, I was supposed to be meeting somebody from, uh, yeah. shit, I can't remember where they're from. Uh, but we were meeting at VIP, and I think he got there first, and he like, sent me a message. He's like, oh, man, Keller, Keller's at VIP? I was like, oh, cool, sick. <laughs> and so we roll up, and you're, uh, I can't remember what exactly happened, but I come into like, the pit in the back, and mm. you're painting, and I was like, I always sort of thought, mate, does he paint? Does he not paint? But you're painting, and I'm like, oh, shit, this is this is fucking sick. And we ended up having a chat, and yeah, like that yeah. that was the first time that we you know that we really met. Yeah. So it's kind of you know I don't know if you want to call it like serendipity or synchronicity so. or whatever. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, here we are now. Yeah, and and I, I think also what it is is because because I met you in those informative stages of me first ever taking a, a can. I was more avid in watching your journey. Because mm. when I first saw you, obviously I didn't know the backstory. I didn't know how long you've been doing it, but I yeah. knew you were new. But it's just, I mean, it's been a crazy year and a half. And yeah, I'm sure. I'm, mate, I'm, I, by I, comparison, you're just like, just on it. Well, I, I, th I think the thing with that is, you know, I mean, I work full time. I work long hours and I, I do tend to do like probably a bit too much bombing in the mornings like on my way to work or whatever. Like, I, I would not recommend people do that. 
people recommend I don't do that. It's, uh, I have a problem. Obviously, I've had addiction <laughs> problems. There's a big addiction component to, to graffiti. And so, yeah, I try and control that. Do you have a problem, sir? Do you have a problem with yeah, your cans? No, no, I need to go to like, you know, Tagaholics Anonymous or whatever. Because oh! like, so, you know, so it is, it gets a... <laughs> go! <laughs> Tagaholics <laughs> Anonymous. Two kilo television. <laughs> yeah, so, you yeah, know, I'll put my hand up and say, hi, I'm Ingo, I'm a Tagaholic. But it's, it's, it's addictive and it's... It's such an outlet, and it's weirdly re well, not weirdly re it's rewarding. Mm. And uh, you know, I I do it because I, I like seeing my name. What's up. the reward? The reward is 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 firstly just like you know whether it's on the bus or the train or something. I see something I've tagged or I've hit. I'm like, I, I was there. I did that it thing. Fills a hole. Fill fills a thing. Yeah, I don't know if it's like it. It's just it's it, you know it's obviously like a serotonin, a dopamine thing. Like it's it's giving me a a, a boost and like you know just going past a trackside or something and remembering what you know that night was like and just like that's that's something cool. And then also like seeing other people's stuff. I see someone else's tag that I know or anyone. I'm just like, I want to do a tag next to it. Really? Um, yeah. It's it's um, it's. It, I've heard it on, uh, you know, other people speak about it, but it's like, you know, whether it's like a roll call or like, you know, you're in some random place and you see someone tagging, you're like, why were that, was that person there? Like, what could they possibly have been doing in that area? This isn't their area. Like, why were they in this random residence? I'm going to leave my tag there as well. You said and, roll call. That's... Well, you see it. You see yeah. those walls. Somebody hits a tag. Someone hits another one. The next thing you know, <laughs> there's 500 on the wall. And it's that... I, I love seeing that. that sounds very endearing. So it is, it should, I think people should look at it. Well, I, I know writers look at it that way. It's but endearing, like, yeah. It is endearing, and it's uh, that to broken window. Well, yeah, that's one. That's like yeah. sort of the negative connotation of it. Give you know, us like, just so people don't, because people might not know what the broken window effect is. Explain as, that. I think as far effect. as I, as my understanding is, it's like you have an area and there's a broken window. There's some psychological reason why if you, there's one broken window and it doesn't get fixed, mm. there's more likely to be more broken windows that don't get fixed. Mm. And then the area becomes more run down. And, mm. it, you know, and so the conclusion from that, I think, is that if you leave a broken window in an area, it's going to make it look like it's a run down area and that's going to attract the you know, wrong things. Yeah. Um, and mm. I think that plays into it with graffiti. Um, I, you know, people would probably agree, disagree, but for me, it's more just like I see a tag. I wanna, I wanna be there as well. Yeah, yeah, or, yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially if it's someone I know or someone I, I look up to. It's yeah. not like I'm gonna come and like you know sneakily put it oh, in oh, next oh, oh, to oh, them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's like I see a tag of somebody. I'm like uh, that. That if if they've put it there, yeah, yeah. There's a there's probably a good reason. So I should probably put mine there the too. The good reason of it's more the good reason effect, isn't it? It's like you want to yeah. put it there because you because it. Your heroes are there, or someone yeah. that you know who passes through frequently. Yeah, we'll see it. Again. it that's another thing as well. Uh, anytime I'm in an area where I know somebody, I'll do stuff yeah. just for them. I'll maybe leave them a message or something oh, like that. The personal that's, ones. Yeah, those are always fun. And Ten Foot's really good at doing that. As far as riders go, uh, for me, and in you know, sort of my time, you know, yeah. like that's probably you know one of the most out there people that question. I've seen. And uh, massive influence on me as yeah, far yeah, as like yeah. you know, big time. Uh, like people who've seen my reaches, they know that I've got a really simple, if you can call it hand style, they're just straight capital letters. Yeah. And because that's, I didn't get into it by, you know, practicing tags on my, my, my notebooks in school. Mm -hmm. It was very much like I wanted to do graph and go out and do a piece because mm -hmm. that appealed to the artistic side and, you know, my creative side. Mm -hmm. And it was only afterwards I was like, I want to start tagging too. I'm not very good at it. So I'm just going to do the most basic thing I can and sort of that I've just run with it. Mm. Um, but yeah, uh, the, the getting into it, I didn't expect to sort of get drawn to the illegal side of it as much as I, from I, at first I thought I was like, oh, I'm only going to do legals. I'm only going to, you know, do it mm. in places that are relatively safe. I don't really want to get in trouble for yeah, this. Yeah, man, and what, I, did, what did they do to you, man? You're a nice guy. What did they do to you, man? No, I'm sorry. Yeah. I, I think I'm still, <laughs> in, I, well, I think fortunately my, my, my sort of ethos is like, you're less likely to have problems with whether it's the police or the public um, if you're sort of personable. And I've been fortunate that, you know, I've been doing it for such a short time. I'm sure things will happen, but I've been fortunate that I've only had one or two, you know, little run-ins. And, you know, both times I was sort of, you know, personal. I mean, I was caught red-handed or chrome-handed. I made that joke and they, they did laugh at it. Um, Charm, offensive, yeah, switch on. Pretty much. <laughs> and just, to, just kind of try to turn on the charm a bit and sort of, and even when I'm just out bombing and stuff, like, 
you can't really act like you're supposed to be there spray painting a big chrome tag on a shutter. But it's like, if you maybe have less, and just because of the background I come from, I'm, I'm not a naturally aggressive person. So I don't think I have that aggressive stance or sort of energy. I think mm. most people who know me will say, no, this is not an aggressive Sorry, person. Um, and that does, you know, sort of benefit me a lot of times because I think people don't expect somebody, you know, sort of in their early to mid thirties to be doing graph mm. or doing it brazenly. And it's maybe a bit disarming, which definitely works to my advantage. But it's the, um, it's the, um, endurance of it and the test the yeah the buzz you get yeah they can't let's, deny let's, let's talk about the let's talk about the previous drug issues you've had yeah 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 so because that correlates somewhat with graph it well it does i mean uh, just to to keep it as brief as possible um you know i tried weed 13 14 years old smoked weed drank alcohol probably you know up until like 18 mm. Um, I was living in the States at the time. I went to a, a big part, they call them a party school out there because it's a big university and they're known for having just endless parties. Wow, sounds good. It, may, it was honestly, like, it's, you know, my, my sort of, uh, my take on living in the States is like, it's living in a movie. That's what that part of my life felt like. It was like living in a film. Uh, it's very surreal. The reality there is, it's, yeah. you know, it's like living in reality TV. But... Um, what about in America? Was this? Do we can we indulge? Uh, um, East coast, d- west coast. Uh, East coast, like southeast coast. Okay. Um, and then, but I moved around. Went to college in the Midwest, mm-hmm. uh, middle of nowhere, and then you know ended up on the west coast for a while. Those Midwest um, ones are most dangerous. I remember doing conference parties there. That shit is. Th- th- they're in a bubble. It, that's like, exactly it. They're it's in a, a bubble. bubble. So yeah, um, yeah. Uh, we're in a big bubble. There's about forty thousand students mm. in the school. Maybe about two thirds of them lived on campus. So you've got, what, 20,000 18 to 22-year-olds living in a very small space. Like, it's going to be... Incestuous and very, very boozy. Yeah, exactly. And so that's... (laughs) Carnal knowledge. Yeah, and that was the formative years of my drug use. And, you know, the States has a big prescription drug problem. Your big time, yeah. Yeah, and that sort of was... Yeah, that was where I got into it. And I'll keep, you know, names and substances and stuff out of it. But I got into a lot of heavy drug use. And that was probably from age, you know... 18 till 28 that was you know the that was a large part of my life really? and so yeah I was, you know time. yeah and I, I did rehabs and I'd been in programs that was part of why I moved back here was because a lot of things sort of came to a conclusion I had legal issues in the states I was sort of at my rock bottom and I you know I had the opportunity to come back to the UK get clean see where it goes I ended up staying uh, this is you know around about 10 years ago maybe a little longer and um, it was the, the best choice that I made. I, I'd run my course in America. Are I'd your had family from America? Um, my mom is. Yeah. My dad's uh, from the UK. Dual citizenship, baby. Come on. Yep. Uh, funnily enough, her her dad was from the UK as well. Her mom's from the uh, from the US. So oh, yeah. um, it's a in, in little interesting backstory. I love that. Yeah. 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 Um, so, that, so I already was like kind of accustomed with the culture there. I'd spent mm. a bit of time there. Parents divorced, moved over there with my mom. And uh, that's why I was sort of isolated from UK culture. And it's like when mm. I moved back here, it's like the t- last 10 years of music, last 10 years of, of graffiti, of everything. Mm. I just wanted to soak it in because I, I, I've been completely, cool. you know, uh, deaf and, and blind to it. Mm. Um, and that, that's sort of, you know, why I am maybe kind of coming at it with so much energy is because I'm, I'm making up for lost time. Making up for lost time. Um, I think Sykes is chewing at the roach for a lighter over there. I <laughs> think. Again, get a man a lighter. I can see, like, can this see guy, this panting guy. over there, yeah. <laughs> panting heavily, <laughs> interrupting the sub. Um, yes, that's right. Got a lot of catching up to do. Mm. 33, 34, around yeah, that age. Around that age. Middle, middle, you're coming to middle age nicely. Yeah. Because um, what people have said on previous on the podcast is, you know, the informative years are very much in the, the early teens and these are my formative that's years. that's what i'm thinking this is the and i think anyone that knows me will attest to this like i have a big inner child anyway and that had been suppressed for quite a long time for a, a number of reasons you know going through hard drug addiction like you you can't really be in you can't have your inner child out because you're not doing childish shit um mm. and um you know and just to go back to the, the whole drugs thing I was really in a bad place again for the first time in a few years, uh, like 
two years ago and then graffiti came along and it oh, immediately so kind of snapped me out of that. Um, Listen, I know, I know we talk about this a lot and I might just add um, as a caveat, don't do this shit that we're talking about at home. Yeah. It'll fucking kill you. Um, but so are drugs. And I would, I would argue the case that that's a life-saving moment because oh, you'll go 100%. down that hole. Yeah, I was going down that hole again, the hole that I'd been down before and couldn't seem to get myself away from. And I'd, I, you know, I'd done quite a lot of creative stuff in the past, not professionally, but I've done some music production, I, I DJ. And uh, for about a year, two years leading up to you know, uh, me getting into graph, I'd really lost touch with all of that because of the drugs. Drugs took over. I let them take over. I was not in a good place. And uh, my friends knew that. And I think that's part of why my one mate introduced me to my other mate who turns out to be Sema. Again, big up Sema. Yeah, again, like, big up Sema, man. Mate, he, you know, he, he pushed me to do it. I mean, I was like very much a recluse. I was not going out and meeting people. I was not going out and meeting my mates. Like if they wanted to see me, mm. they had to come to me. Um, and now my life is completely different. Uh, it's gone from, you know, being, and I, also I wasn't working at the time. I'm, you know, working full time now. And then all my free time, I, it's like, as soon as I get a call on fr Thursday, Friday night, oh, we're going to paint here. Oh, I'm there. I'm, go I'm going there. You like, fucking love it, don't you? I absolutely love it. And it's, it's something I've always wanted to do. And I've always taken notice of and always sort of was like, I, I, I don't know how you do it. I don't know how you get into it. And that was a big thing, getting shown the way. With that question. Was, was how I was able to get into it as quickly as I did. Um, but I'd really been wanting to do it for so long. And once I saw it getting being done, like, this is it. This is, the, this is the ultimate thing. I'm a firm believer, right, particularly with Graf, that the moment you pick up that can and you apply it to something, mm -hmm. the... That's when, for me, that's when the buzz starts. The door opens yeah, uh, yeah. to every realm of possibility mm -hmm. creatively, wherever you choose to indulge. Absolutely. But, but at the same time, the people around you, they nurture mm -hmm. skills and ability yeah. and good behavior. Listen, it's not, <laughs> it's, there's obviously the, the skill that, and you know, abilities and stuff that you pick up from riding with other riders and watching, especially just watching somebody do their thing. Yeah. Uh, you may not be able to replicate it or even get close, but you, you've seen like, the first time I saw somebody do a cutback. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, that's how it's done fucking mind blowing shit it is the little detail things absolutely. are the things that blow your mind absolutely the and things you don't they don't tell you yeah, yeah. And, and so that it's you know it's an irreplaceable thing like mm. watching other people do it um, but you know you, you meet positive and negative people along the way and I, I, I believe that there's sort of a lesson in, in all of those interactions uh, but the positive people that I've met and uh, you know one person that I'll shout out that I met uh, for the first time, fairly recently, through uh, through Cap, uh, you know, big, big up Cap, yeah, big up Cap, big, and, up, Cap. And big, big up, up Sample, yeah, Sample too, and and uh, Northwest Supplies, like All they're day. doing their little paint thing. No, like, I'm, start, I'm starting to use their their, their services. Uh, honestly, Friday night, I'm off work, I'm like, mate. I need six burners. <laughs> I need four blacks. You know what uh, pinks, purples? You know what colors I'm going to mm. do my dubs in? Mm -hmm. uh, no problem, mate. We'll come meet they you. Got, and like, yeah, I, yeah. I, I got a lot of love for them. But it was through Cap he introduced me to Zonk. And like, no introduction needed. Mm. Like, uh, if like it's if I could say there's any rider that I noticed when I was, you know, 13, 14, still living in the UK, mm. it's Zonk. Like, I was mm. always in Northwest London. So like, and then seeing the photos of mm. the old pieces, I'm like, I remember seeing yeah, that yeah, piece, yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's all coming back yeah. to me. And it's, uh, but it, what my point was is that the first time meeting him, um, he's such a positive guy, and he's so deep. And yeah. Um, yeah, and yeah, yeah, wise yeah. as well, which yeah. you know anyone with with that much life experience is it, you know hopefully should take away a lot of wisdom from it, and mm -hmm. he sure has. Yeah. And it's like that's you know you don't meet people like that every day. You know what happens with this, and I think it, it correlates with a lot of people that are in the creative industries. Is when you're younger, you can afford, and your your people around you tolerate that level of quote unquote rock star behavior, where you mm -hmm. can go totally brutal on doing what you do best. Mm -hmm. Like Graf has a lot of that. The younger you are, the more you hammer it. You can get all into the mischief and the, the, the misdemeanors and the bad behavior. Yeah. But there's something about taking stock. And it's the same with music. When you tour the fuck out of someone, can you know, binge and purge every territory possible. Yeah. You come back and the self-awareness you, you, you mm -hmm. garner from mm -hmm. those experiences 
No college can teach you that. Shit. No, absolutely. It's you know whether you call it like the you know the school of life or the school of hard yeah, knocks yeah, yeah, or yeah, whatever yeah, yeah. it is. It's like that doing the thing itself is that that's always been the way I learned. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, in yeah, school, yeah, yeah. in life, it's like I, I had to make the mistakes that I made to learn the lessons that I've learned. Mm. And, you know, uh, it's, it's the same thing with, with graffiti. It's the same with everything. Yeah. So it's a great um, case study, though, because, you know, there's, there's, there's an aura. There's a mystique about this. And, oh, and absolutely, this person, absolutely. And when you meet him, it's like you know that there's a depth and you know he's my guy. I fucking love Zonk, man. Mm. And when, when you have a chat with him, there's so many. It's like it's, a, it's enlightening. Yeah, I, man, I felt enlightened the yeah, first yeah. time that it's I like met him. It's like a calendar. Yeah, um, it's a, a, a Christmas calendar. Yeah. We, every time you see him, you open another fucking yeah. door. Yeah, and also sometimes they say, "Oh, you know, don't meet your heroes," but mm. like there's people who break that mold, yeah, and yeah, I yeah, think yeah, he's, yeah. you know, for a lot of people, I imagine he he is their graph hero. Yeah, 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 um, yeah. And you know, again, just a great guy and with so much wisdom and mm. talent and skill as well that he's you know applying in mm. a positive way. He's a positive yeah. person. Positivity. And again, I think, just to emphasise this again, from the top of the show, the reason why I love you sitting here is because of your energy and the fact that you're doing everything right. You know what I'm saying, Sykes? You're doing everything... You, you, I, don't, for, I don't know about, about doing, doing right everything right. You're doing I'm right, tr- right things. I'm trying, to, I'm, trying to do, I'm trying to do right by myself and my, by my past and... You know, there obviously some people are going to say there's a right and a wrong way to approach graph, and like by a lot of standards, I did approach it backwards. Mm. I mean, but um, you know, I'm in my 30s. Like, there's mm. no, I don't think there is a right way to do it. Most people are going to turn around and say, "Why?" And people do turn around and say, "What? Why are you still doing this? Why are you doing this at all?" Are you I challenged? Are you challenged why people do right as normal? You know, members of public, do they? Are you, are you no, challenged? Ma- most writers, like, they get it. Mm. Um, there's some people who maybe look at it as just like, oh, he, he's just going to come do a little bit here and there, and then he's going to disappear again. And, like, even if that is all I do, like, if I meet people like that along uh, the way, that's cool. I that's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Like, it's got, now it's got such a, a, a deep part of me. It's not my whole life, but it's it's become a big part of it. There's definitely and, some OCD going on. Oh, no, well, I'm, I'm diagnosed OCD. Say again, say again. I said, I'm yet to call Ingo and him not come out. He, he, he's yet time. to call, Sykes is yet to call you I, I want to be that. Out. I want to be that guy. And like at first, <laughs> and this was a challenge at first because like I've, I, I, like you said, OC, there's OCD in it. I'm diagnosed OCD. I take medication for OCD. And so, Graph obviously is very obsessive and very compulsive. And then I'm an addict on top of that. So it's like the trifecta of I'm going to get Trifecta, hooked. that's a new <laughs> word on a podcast right there, boy. <laughs> that might be a, an Americanism. Do I, need to, do I need to cut that out? That's a fucking bit. What's it mean? Trifecta. Uh, like tries and like triangles. So the three sort of points of the pyramid of like, uh, you're going to get, a, you know, if it's addictive or what is it? If you're obsessive, compulsive and have an addictive personality graffiti is for you yeah so trifecta <laughs> trifecta is the book on graffiti that's the title of it trifecta. Hey, you know what I, I, like someone should someone should take that and use it yeah, but, um, for real, for real. yeah. but yeah uh, i forgot my point now but the point is is that you you have these uh, personality um things that you've got to wrestle with most days <laughs> yeah i um, oh thank you man um, it's, <laughs> it says it, while he while he takes a quick zoom <laughs> listen um don't if you're into drugs or getting into drugs or you're around people that are involved in drugs, like I can't say don't do it. Um, I'm a person who's wanted to experiment with, with all kinds of things in all areas of my life. Um, but be mindful of the fact that the shit is dangerous. And mm. what I had to sort of come to terms with is that a lot of the stuff they taught me in school, actually, you know what, it's not too far. There's, it's dramatized a lot. There's, it's it's a lot of it is not too far from the truth. As far as weed goes, you know... Yeah. People have problems with it, but for me, it's it's sort of you know I have one vice, mm. you know, one or two vices. I'm okay with that compared to where I was. Mm. Um, you know, it's a, a world of difference. No, I'd like to second um, that because rest in peace, Jamal Edwards, who passed away because of his uh, newly found drug activities. I'm 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 of course referring to the uh, note that was put, presented on his mum's um, Instagram account. So I'm paraphrasing a little mm. bit in what I read there, but the yeah. When you're and late in the development of drug taking and stuff, that shit, yeah, the constitution that, ain't built for it. You gotta go. Real, yeah, real and listen, careful. rest in peace, Halo as well. Uh, yeah, recently passed rest away. In peace, Halo. Um, and yeah. you know, great guy with great energy, and you know, I'm not going to go into details. It's it's not my business. It's not anyone's business, really. But you know, just be 
aware of what you're doing and, you know, how you're doing it and have people around you who keep you in check. And that's sort of a, a big thing for me because like, yeah. I got people around me who keep me in check, who know when I may be pushing the boundaries or in a certain, more, most of the time it's like they'd see that I'm in a certain mindset yeah. and they, they, you know, check in with me and make sure like, listen, like, you know, let's go out and paint. Mm. I think you need to go paint. And that's a big thing as well. It's like, if I'm feeling in any kind of way vulnerable or I'm struggling or I'm stressed or I'm anxious, I'll go out and paint. Mm. And it's not just the release, it's just that it takes me away from... The distra it's distraction. It's, and, and that's a, for, for certainly for drug addiction, uh, distracting yourself is key. And that I was always taught, like, you know, in rehab and AA and NA and whatever else it was, mm. it's like, you know, have a distraction, have a hobby. And that, and, you know having a job and working long hours like that has, has has saved me one thing i will say though i mean yes absolutely and if you know drop your comments down below man tell us tell us how you're feeling if anyone's out there that's using graffiti as a as a conduit to better things you know staying away from drugs and drink and alcohol but what drugs and drink and alcohol but um Listen, it can be a, <clears throat> every, anything could be a problem but there is a this yeah i'm just Sykes is in the corner there, just <laughs> having a great time. Um, and I'm just thinking, yeah, graffiti can sometimes be the conduit to excessiveness as well. It's, it's a double-edged sword, isn't it? A hundred percent, you couldn't have put it any better. That's how I always describe it. It is a double-edged sword. I do things uh, in, in my graffiti that I, I'm t I think I'm taking calculated risks, but I'm also taking unnecessary risks. And any of my mates will attest to this. Um, and it's something that I'm trying to work on currently. You know, a lot of people would probably say, oh, you know, fuck it, like you're getting up, you're getting up. But like, you know, shitting on your own doorstep is a term that I hear a lot of. And well, um, Directed at you for shitting on a doorstep? Yes, uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> I won't go into, into too many details, but um, it's the, the compulsive and addictive part of it. It's like I'm getting buffed every day on the same spots and I'm hitting the same spots every day. You know, that... There's no way I can say that and it not sound like, yo, you need to stop doing that. It's like you're going to bait yourself out. But there's this compulsion that I'm not going to let the buff man win. Are you but, at war with the buff man? Yes. <laughs> um, it's not a specific one, but there's a couple. It's, it's, I, I won't go into the whole story. It's really kind of silly. I like to, I like to sort of be uh, anyone that, you know. Tom maybe, and Jerry shit right it's, there. It's very much Tom and Jerry. And like I get, a, a, again, it's my inner child. I get a lot out of that. But as some people have rightly said, it may well be my downfall. And I, I really don't want to be in a position where I'm taking risks that are going to prevent me from being able to go on and do other things that I'd like to uh, that are far more risky, but, you know, you really have to have everything sort of nailed down tightly. Uh, I don't want to have any loose ends. And I don't want to be making silly moves or silly mistakes that are going to end up, you know, having greater ramifications. What do you think the greater ramifications are? What, what, could, what, what would happen if someone bagged you or you did get your cans taken away or slapped well, wrist and you had that, to... That's, well, that's happened a few times, a couple of times. Um, most I got very lucky in Shoreditch. Oh, um, yeah, I heard about this. Yeah. Um, this I, is like folklore at the moment. This is like this, current... I, I don't know about folklore. <laughs> it was, it was, I was not being the smartest and we'd sort of been bombing around and we'd done some pieces, but, you know, bombing Shoreditch. Um, and as I was getting progressively closer and closer to, um, I think it was Old Street, or I was on Old Street. I can't, I can't quite fully remember. Either way, turns out I was doing like the third throw up on the fire station and I didn't realize it was the fire station. The next thing I hear is, yo, run, run. And I'm with two people who, yeah, shout out to, to my guy, you know who you are. Um, but they, they keep trying to keep a low profile. They both have BTP cases. And so my first thought is, I'm, I'm red handed. Like they need to just run off like, yeah, mm -hmm. I'm just going to turn around. I turn around. There's the fucking bully van and seven feds. And you're there. in front of them, so they ain't going to run ahead. Yeah, I was you? like, I'm not. I'm not going to. I'm not even going to run. I was like, you got me. And so it ended up being a you know 51 pound. I'm not saying like, oh, it's a small fine. It's fine to do. And I'm not saying it does make you want to do it more because it it definitely doesn't do that. But um, uh, it, it ended up being a, a relatively small price to pay for what was a, a could have a, been a lot greater. Let, let's just say if it was in my own council 
they were they because they they did the shortest police they didn't care about my reach they didn't want to photograph anything they didn't care what i was writing they just cared that they caught me doing something i shouldn't have been doing it wasn't in a public view yeah in public view and it wasn't on a designated area right. um you, you know listen it was it was a stupid thing to do it's still there the drop shadow is still like almost finished and you can sort of see the trail of mm. where and where, where my night ended uh but you know t they took all my paints um uh, they did leave me my weed though, um, and they acknowledged that, and I acknowledged that that was cool of them to do. Uh, but they took all my paint, took my pens, and gave me a fine. Uh, they said I was banned from the area for a year, but the paperwork never came through on that. I think they were just bluffing. Um, but that that sort of has been my biggest consequence so far, and I'm I, I just want to stay humbled. I'm, yeah, I, I'm lucky. I'm so lucky because yeah. I've done stuff that I, I I shouldn't have done, or I should have been more cautious about, mm. and like that was just. You know, it, it it sort of sent a message. Mm. Um, it did make me sort of want to do more, and sort of a, a brief feeling of like, oh, well, this is it. Like, you know, this this isn't that big of a price to pay. But down the line, I'd like to to do stuff that there's definitely a bigger price to pay. And you know, I've got mates who have had serious cases or ongoing cases, and to be mandated that you can't carry paint or pens or writing utensils or something, it's like that is the, you know, other than, other than obviously jail time, prison, whatever, um, and fines, you know, I don't want to be prevented from being able to carry something to write on stuff mm -hmm. with because that's what, what gives me pleasure. Mm -hmm. And so I, I'm try, I try to be mindful of not take it too far, not get too carried away. Mm. Um, and that's, that's, you know, that's the other edge of the double-edged sword mm. is the, all the good stuff, but then there's the... Um, you know, it's easy to get carried away. Sage advice there, coming from Ingo. You know, I mean, doesn't need me to re-emphasize for the billionth time how people die out there for this shit. That so too. be super careful. That too. It's not just the legal uh, stuff. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of stuff, yeah. man. It's a lot of stuff. Um, yeah, man. It's it's a crazy time where graffiti, in a broader sense, in an international sense, is it's, it's, it's become a common thing it's, it's in the media it's, it's, it's used in advertising it's the same yeah. as like anytime you see like a, a extreme sports yeah. theme commercial it's got drum and bass yeah. in the background it's yeah. like they've caught it's on to the fact that. that it's a you know a, a touchstone for uh people of our generation I, I, right. I, I, I can't claim it's not just coming out my vocabulary i probably watched a documentary recently no. recently trust me it'd be spread next 30 episodes just me going to be rehashing some of these these quite with no absolutely no idea what it means yeah. but yeah <laughs> um yeah, it's normalized. What do they do? What can people do? What what can authorities do? I have no idea, man. I mean, yeah. It's, and it's uh, not going away. It never has gone away. No. This is the thing people don't understand. It's yeah. like this is like 40, 50 years old. It's mm -hmm. gonna be fifty years mm -hmm. old. What well, you can get you can get deeper into it than that. You know, right on. writing on walls and yeah. stuff and like the, the definition of the word graffiti is yeah. like, you know, you're writing on you've got Viking graffiti and yeah, stuff yeah, like yeah. that carved into a wooden yeah. tree or yeah. a, you know, a wooden cocoon stuff. Exactly, shit. exactly. And so it's it's the, the compulsion or the impulse to leave your mark and write your name on a mm. wall is, is you know, centuries or millennia old. That's another thing I love about it. It's mm. like, they can't get rid of that. Mm. Um, and your DJ, so what did you used to DJ? What was your thing? Um, well, a, a bit of, I, I like to drive a bit of everything, but mostly like 140s, you know, a lot of dubstep, uh, grime as well. Yeah. And then, you know, drum and bass, obviously. And, uh, and then, you know, anything in between, you know, house techno, uh, again, with production, like I, I produced a, a bit of everything, but I mainly got into um, uh, sort of like mix engineering and mm. mastering. And mm. that was probably where I sort of excelled the most. I'm not, a, not a, com a composer. And part of my sort of journey into craft was sort of realizing that my, I was never going to really have a music career. I'm okay with that. Uh, but I just, I didn't have the, the pure dedication that you need to do something like you do where like you make it your life and like you, you hone mm. your skill every day. And like that, it's just not within my uh, my capability, and I made my peace with that, mm. and um, you know found alternate mm. uh, ways of being able to sort of fulfil that. It's a cross to bear, isn't it? Because while you're creative in the field that you assigned yourself to be in, mm. there is the extracurricular other things. That exactly, the people you meet, the places you go. And right. I don't know any other culture. That is so immersive, ding ding graph. Yeah, absolutely. Shit, and it crosses so many different other cultural boundaries. And 
you know, areas of, of, of interest, you know, yeah. whether it's the music or the arts or, you know, break dancing, b-boying, beatboxing. It's, it's vast, really. Vast, and like it's all, And they all inter, you know, intertwine, you know, graffitis in music videos. You've got references to graffiti in music. Mm. Um, you know, the beatboxing is the music. It's, it's all intertwined and like Crazy, that's, yeah, that's it. Scary. Um, and the way with graffiti, another thing that I just I, I pick up on is the way that, again, you're, you're handed over the keys to this scene mm-hmm. and you're, you can be judged on it pretty fucking quickly. Yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. And if, you know what I mean, anything could go wrong. Yeah. Anything, everything goes right, but at the same time, yeah. the more it goes right, the more problems start yeah, coming but, behind but, you. And, but you. And you do have to, uh, part of it, I think, is you, you are opening your, any, with any kind of art, you're opening yourself up to criticism. And certainly I've, I've you know, had a lot of criticism. And I th- What's I'm the biggest ma- criticism you've had? Um, probably, yeah, of just being called a toy. And I've, I've definitely, I, I call myself a toy sometimes because I do toy stuff. Um, you know, the idea of being a toy is somebody is like picking up a, a crayon like it's a toy and just writing. I do that because sometimes it's fun. But, you know, I, they, I think it's, I can't remember what interview or what documentary it was. Somebody said everyone goes through their toy phase. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I'm, I'm not going to you know, say can't what, remember that. It was, I know the one. I yeah, can't remember what it was. Yeah. Um, but, it was what? more like it was a conversation, wasn't it? I can't remember what. Um, yeah. Um, but as far as criticism goes, it, whether it's on a, a personal level, people don't, I think the way, the person, type of person I am rubs a lot of people the wrong way because people will come at you with physical or verbal aggression. And then when you don't react in an equally physically or, aggra- or verbally aggressive way, it throws people off and sometimes gets them, you know, even more wound up. How often do you get altercations like that though? I can't imagine you get that much. Um, oh, I'm, I'm I've been fortunate that I've not had any like physical, physical altercations. I've had stuff where it's, it's maybe almost escalated and I've either been with people who would have jumped in, uh, you know, <laughs> pick up Diamond Monk. Uh, I'm sure they remember the story. Uh, but yeah, they were there for me at a time where like it could have, oh, you know, it was an isolated place. Like it could have gone quite bad. Badly, um, it was all over false pretenses, kind of thing. But um, I think, yeah, there is a big part of the scene that there is a, a, this a lot of aggression that's not maybe uh, being channeled in the right way, and mm. it can sort of come at you for various reasons. And mm. I'm not going to go out and say, oh, I have anything about me that people would be jealous of, but I have experienced maybe what see is sort of see feels like jealousy. Um, I imagine if I was in you know, people's shoes and looking at someone else doing something that I wanted to do or maybe had done and wasn't doing anymore, I would feel a type of way maybe. Oh, okay. um, and so, I, I, you know, I'm not pointing any fingers or anything like that, but I've, I've had all kinds of criticism. An- another one I'll touch on is um, there's an Instagram page. I think it's Graffiti Courtroom. Uh, you may might yeah, have I've seen it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so um, I knew my time was coming because when I first got into it, I was painting my own stuff, but I was like, I need a style. And so I went on Google, uh, like probably most people have done. I looked at letters, I found an alphabet, I'm like, I like this one. So I drew my little sketch and I started using those letters. And I mm. used them for about, I'd say nine months or so. And like, if anyone asked, like, oh, that's, that's interesting letters, are those you? I was like, no, no, I got them off Google. But anyway, I knew my time was coming and Graffiti Courtroom posted a, a, a little post. It's like, you know, Ingo and it had one of my dubs. And then it was like, who is it? Like, it's like Mr. Wiggles graffiti creator. It's like some like guy who's like quite famous for doing graffiti alphabets. And then they mm. compared the two. And as soon as I saw it, I just like jumped into the comments and I was like, yeah, 100%. Like I took those letters and it was because I had this sit, this outline that I could do again and again, I was able to practice my fills and practice my can control. And mm. then I sort of came up with my sort of own style and was able to apply it. And, mm. you know, I think uh, people definitely maybe look at that as, you know, something. You know, you, know, you shouldn't do, you shouldn't buy anything. But I would say, listen, if you're getting into it and you want to just, you want to do it and you maybe don't mm. feel good enough, you know, look at some letters, do it. Don't claim it as your own. Don't go go around saying, oh, I've made these. You know, you'll get impossible. caught out. Yeah, you'll, impossible. you'll get it's caught just, out. Um, yeah. But at the same time, like, use inspiration. From, Dude, from, I get, I get, listen, I've been given, you know, sketches mm-hmm. from the beginning you yeah know what i mean like yeah, likewise big up breeze big up arrow big up crept big up um uh ram like enough mm. people because they want you to like you can't start off nowhere yeah you have to you have to start somewhere you know what i mean like that's it that's it and having those people around you 
Um, and there, you know, fortunately, there's a lot of people on the scene who will do you a sketch and yeah. give you some letters and say, yo, go do this. Yeah, like, yeah. use that outline. And I've got a banging outline from here, actually, DDS. You know what I mean? Like, oh, oh, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Because you take away things. You, Absolutely. You, you, and it, you form your own thing. You that's know? it. That's it. And I think that's a, a perfectly valid way of, you know, you do it with respect and integrity. And mm -hmm. I think it's a totally valid way of, yeah. you know, getting into it mm. and and maybe you know I, I see a lot of these you know really young writers who just have this natural ability and they've just come up with some crazy style mm. uh as big up guilt like he's he's younger guy and i'll take guilt I, new I, name on a pod come on yeah um i started seeing his stuff and like uh, he's got a style of his own and you just can't place it anywhere mm. and it's like i love that i wish i had that um it's taken yeah, yeah but you know who also has that as well yeah this guy yes here. man it does my head in. I'm like, yo, yeah, just your, your style, your like Sykes's style is like it's unique. unique. You can't say, oh, it looks a bit like this. It, do it doesn't look like right. anything else. But do you think birds with feather flock together like that? Because like we're saying, okay, start somewhere. There's nothing better than when you see an influence of someone in someone else's thing, but they're switching up differently. Mm. But with the way you guys are roll. And the same with dime. I mean, these are cherry picked individual stylistic kind of. Yeah, they're very, they're you very guys different. Are, you're all very different. Yeah. I fucking did. But that, I think that's why I get I like. excited, shall I say? I get no, excited like, listen, about that. No, listen, it is exciting. I, 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 and this is the thing that I like. It's like, there, obviously, you see within Cruise, there's a, a, a stylistic sort of uh, theme going on. And uh, and I, I love that as much as when you've got this you know, group of people who are together mm. and they're all completely different Jeez. and very diverse. And that that's what I like to see when mm. I when I go past a wall or go past yeah. some some spots and I mm. see that it's not all just like the exact same sort of yeah, dubs. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, some, yeah. There's, there's nothing wrong with that, but it's in my eyes it's more appealing when you've got lots of different stuff going on. And I think that's uh, people will say, "Oh, the London scene is it's you know, the London letters," and of course you get a lot of that, but we ha we are lucky. We've yeah. got a lot of diversity in the scene as far as styles go. PFB. Well, I mean, oh, PFB, oh yeah, fucking like di the CBM right now. Just like so diverse. Absolutely. ATG. Yeah. You know I mean, I I know what you're saying. Mm -hmm. There's a London look within it all, but there's some crews that just really span yeah. e expand diversity in there. And then of course all the characters. you know the foreign riders who have have come to London and you yeah. know maybe some you know are here temporarily some have made the made it their yeah. home yeah. and they bring their own influences yeah. and you know some people who don't like the you know euro style or yeah. whatever or anti style like in my opinion it's like if you want to do graffiti you know, any way in which you do it is the right way to do it. Yeah. People may not respect it or admire it or like it, but yeah. it's like if you're doing it, you're doing it. Yeah. And so if I see somebody and they're doing some crazy, ridiculous anti-style piece, but they're doing it, it's like I can't can't knock that. That's kind of what Dime alluded to. It's like, you know, you ain't got a problem with street artists, you ain't got a problem with people that do that sort of mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. He's just cut from a different cloth. And yeah, that's it. That's no, it. I think and it's a good way of looking at it. Yeah, no, I think it's a, a healthy thing for people to sort of have. Like, you know, obviously there's the 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 beef or the the whatever you duality between street art and graffiti mm. and you know graph goes over street art and like yeah I'm, I'm very guilty of sometimes i'll see something i'm like oh that's really pretty i'm gonna do a chrome dub through it mm -hmm. and like you know it's again it's a compulsion um and where does that compulsion come from um i think it's just the compulsion to to, to rebel i mean it's obviously a, for a lot of people graffiti is probably a, a uh, pretty rebellious activity yeah, 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 yeah. and it, it's you know for me it's it feels like a rebellious thing certainly like with you know getting buffed and going back and doing the same spot like you're you know rebelling against something you may not know what you're rebelling against but that need to rebel uh for me this is an outlet and I'll never put something, you know, maybe I'll do something political one day if, if there's some issue that is close to my heart and I, you know, I feel I need to make a statement on. But for me, it's the act itself. I'm taking this space and I'm putting my name on it. And you can try and stop me, but I will be back and I will do it again. And I will do it 10 times more. Um, and that's, that's where the, the compulsion sort of comes into it. Wow. Well, we've covered some spots today. That's amazing. Un relentless tap of it feels like it's i'm talking to somebody that is at the beginning of their journey 100 and has I totally am. just got their feet in the right pair of shoes you know what i mean like, fortunately i've had a lot of really good people around me like yourself who have put me on a good path and you know 
told me the do's and do nots, but also said, listen, like have fun with it and do your thing. Mm. And and that's been the best thing of all is is sort of having that guidance and um and support from you know from my peers. I think it's fantastic. I think this podcast is gonna wake a lot of people up as to the inside me- mechanisms of Ingo and and that uh, I think there's gonna be a lot of new fans out there kind of checking well, out in a few Listen, I, I, I appreciate that. And uh, again I'm I'm humbled. Uh, but most of all I just hope that what some people can take away from it is that you know, you can be any age and just start doing it. Like, don't let anyone say, no, nah, you know, you, you've passed your prime, there's no point doing it, or mm-hmm. don't sort of give in to any kind of self-doubt. Uh, you know, I started it in my early 30s, and I'm catching up on people who are not, not that I'm caught up, but, like, I'm trying to catch up on, on people who've been doing it for, for 10, 15 years. And, you know, I've got, um, you know, don't don't let that put you off. Do it. Mm-hmm. if it And if it gives you a good feeling, do it more you're giving us you're giving us a show and that when you throw that into the uh when you throw the cat amongst the pigeons like that you're only gonna get entertainment you know what i mean well this it's it is entertaining it's entertaining for me and you know i, I like to think that in some ways i can you know entertain other people as well mm. um, and inspire that's it that's it um you know i'm inspired by it and you know if i can inspire just you know one person to to do it themselves that's sort of like mission accomplished really and that's how we roll out. Out like in was out of fashion. Ingo, thank you so much, my mm. brother. That absolute pleasure, perfect. man. Absolute pleasure. I knew this was going to be bliss. Big him up, man. Big shout out to everyone that's checking us out. Killer Killer Podcast. We out like that, all right? Sharing is caring, remember. Tell a friend to tell a friend, all right? Crime don't pay, but neither did they. Be lucky. Stay safe. Don't talk to anyone I wouldn't, all right? Take care. Easy. Peace.